and welcome to the Brook Willow Knitting Podcast. My name is Anna and I am coming to you from Minneapolis, Minnesota. This is a podcast about knitting, sewing, and whatever craft is piquing my interest at the time. Um, so let's start out with what I'm wearing. It is definitely not something I made, however, I wish I could make this. I'm just going to slide up so you can see this cute little tie on it. Um, I actually thrifted this. It's the CJ Banks brand. Um, yeah, so as we all know, the fashion industry, specifically fast fashion, is just terrible for the environment. Um, and I actually worked in that field. I worked at a couple different retail stores over the last 10 years. And so I really got to see firsthand how much it encourages people to buy impulsively and then just get rid of their clothing after because it just goes out of style so quickly. Um, so once I left, I made a pact with myself. First of all, I was never going to purchase a sweater again because I have the means to make a sweater and so I do not need to purchase it anymore. And then I got a little interested into sewing so I thought maybe I should really just start sewing my own clothes but since I'm still a beginner I can't make all of my clothes quite yet so if I can't make it I decided that I want to thrift it and I feel like that's really uh, a way that I can impact this climate crisis so here we are and I also thrifted some fabric that I'm going to show you more at the end of this episode so let's get into some finished projects if you have been following along my previous episodes, you know the saga of this next piece, which I am happy to report is finished. So here it is. This is the Cotton Grass Jumper by the Petite Knitter. I have been working on this project since last October. so coming up to almost a year ago. Um, I won't go too much into the story of why I had to remake it four times. If you're interested, just watch my previous episodes. But I am just pleased with this final result. And really what first drew me to this sweater is this pattern here. I just thought it was the perfect pattern. It's super easy for color working because it only uses two colors and the graph was just very easy to follow along. Um, so if you haven't seen my previous episodes, I used some a cashmere blend yarn paired with a strand of silk mohair from Knitting for Olive. Um, so here it is. I'm so excited for when I finally get to wear it. It's still pretty hot here. It's about 90 some degrees today, so I don't see it happening anytime soon, but again, very pleased. Um, if you want to see a picture of me wearing it, it's on my Instagram, and I'll probably be taking more pictures of it in the future as well, because it's just, it's so beautiful. Um, okay, so my next completed project, I actually made this winter, and I have some special guests that are going to model it. They both are sleeping on the couch right now, so I have to wake them up. Kevin? Marshall? Come here! <gasps> Can you come here? Come here! Come here! Okay, Kevin. Come on. All right. First up, we have Kevin. Kevin, can you look at the camera? <gasps> Hi. <laughs> so this is Kevin. He's our oldest dog. He's one years old. He's going to be two in August. Your birthday's coming up. Um, so just take note of his <laughs> scarf here and then really quick. Okay, we got model number two. 
This is Marshall. <laughs> Here is his scarf. I'm just kind of manhandling him right now. Marshall just turned one in June. So these are the boys of the house. And yeah, I just thought it'd be fun to have them in an episode. I am going to take off these scarves really quick because like I said, it's in the 90s, so I don't want you too overheating. Also, they're a little bit dirty because we just got back from the dog park, so usually they're a bit cleaner and fluffier. Um, yeah, so let's talk about their scarves a little bit. Um, this was not a pattern that I followed. I just kind of made it up myself, so I'll show you Marshall's. It's just a doggy snood. I just knit it in the round and created this tube and I just made up this pattern. I use this app called Quilt Paper, um, not sponsored at all by them, but it's a really nice tool. It's basically just a graph and you can choose colors and then just kind of color in any type of image you want and that's how you get the pattern to make whatever you want. So here's Marshall's and then I will show you Kevin's. Also I should mention these have been very well loved. They already went through an entire season this winter so they're not in the best shape. But yeah, I thought they turned out pretty fun. Um, I used some scrap, well I shouldn't say scrap yarn, but leftover yarn is just like the Lion brand chunky acrylic yarn that I was making hats with a few years ago and I since stopped making those hats so I wanted to use the leftovers for something for the dogs. I still have a lot more leftovers so I think I have some other projects in the works for future knitwear for the winter for the boys so yeah pretty fun. Um, Alright so the next thing I'm going to show you is half ton or I should say like 75% done and they are, let's show you them here, the Everyday Socks by Andrea Maori. Um, love this design. I did talk about my last episode with a different skein of yarn that I was going to make this pattern. However, I went to a yarn shop last week and I got this Malabrigio sock yarn and I just, I had to put the beige aside because this color is just incredible. I could not not start with this one first. Um, so I'm very happy with it. I just want to show you quick how goofy these socks look without the sock blocker. They're so tiny and just like a little hot dog. Um, but it goes to show how stretchy they are and it creates like an amazing fit on your foot. Like I've tried this sock on, I walked around the house with one sock all night and it did not budge and it was easy to get on to so I really love this pattern. It's super intuitive, it's very mindless knitting especially um, in these portions of it where it's just the 2x2 two two rib and the heel gusset was very easy. Honestly I don't know what technique was or what the name of the technique was for this heel. I just know it was very easy. <laughs> very pleased. So this is definitely a pattern that I'm going to make over and over and over again. It really says in the title too with the everyday sock, like you really could wear this every day, make it in multiple colors, even do stripes if you want, or just contrasting. Okay, sorry, this camera really likes to just stop recording suddenly, even with full battery life. But as I was saying, great sock. I'm going to knit it many times. Um, they're going to make great gifts too. So 
if you're close to me in life, you can expect these for birthday gifts and holiday gifts. Okay, also for those who are wondering, from my last episode, I had another debacle with another knit thick carpet coat. <laughs> um, I received so much great advice. Some very unique ideas that were honestly really fun to read, but I think the majority of what people suggested was for me to cut off the bottom portion of the pattern and continue the ribbing and I was going to do that and I was leaning towards that for the last two weeks but I think I decided I'm going to restart the entire project which I know I put so much work so many hours into it already. Um, however, I did mention that I used the wrong size needles and they were up like half a size to a full size needles and I realized that I really just want the knit itself to be tighter. It's kind of loose and if I want it to be pretty long lasting and warm, I just want that gauge to be tighter. So I think I'm going to rip apart the entire sweater and start from the beginning. Who knows what that's going to happen though because I have all of these other projects but I really want this one done by fall because I feel like it's going to be the perfect piece. And if you don't know what I'm talking about just watch the last episode and you'll hear all about it. Okay, so that's pretty much all I have for knitting. Um, let's move on to sewing. I do have a completed project. Again, if you follow me on Instagram, you have seen this. It is another version of the fawn dress. So let me just show you here. But it's a short version. So if you saw my first episode, I made this in a cream linen and it was a nice long dress. I thought it would be fun to make the shorter version of this though for just a slightly more casual sundress look and I'm very happy with it. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this fabric. Forgive me, I have an old camera. It doesn't have autofocus so it may be a little blurry. But I actually thrifted this fabric from Savers. Um, it used to be a bed sheet. <laughs> it may look like a bed sheet to those of you out there, but I was just very called to the color and I love this like watercolor pattern on it. I feel like it will allow me to pair it with a lot of different things in a lot of different colors. Maybe throw a sweater over the top or like a oversized denim vest maybe but yeah I'm so happy with it it fits wonderful too I highly recommend making this pattern I do think I've kind of worn myself out on the fawn dress since I've made two and a half versions of it already so I think my next sewing project will be something outside of the fawn dress. Uh, I do have some stuff in mind that I'm very excited for. Um, okay, so like I said earlier, I did thrift some fabric and I'm going to show you that next. I've seen other people make garments out of old tablecloths or curtains or even heard someone making with shower curtains and that really got me excited because fabric can be expensive but at the thrift shop not at all so the first thing I'm going to show you is this um, it was a tablecloth it's kind of a linen material I'm just gonna drink some water quick all right okay so this is not normally a color that I am drawn to. I'm not a huge pink person, but this is kind of like a mauve pink and the material felt so amazing. I just, I couldn't pass it up. 
and it gave me like at least three yards worth of this it was four dollars so I can make something out of this for four dollars with this color no problem <laughs> maybe another dress is what I'm thinking but we'll see so the next project or sorry the next fabric I'm going to show you is another tablecloth out of some linen material and it's this brown color I've got to say I have been obsessed with this shade of brown this summer I don't know why I love it so much maybe it's because it's just something that hasn't been in my wardrobe but I am just obsessed with brown I even have these like brown bike shorts on right now so you can see I definitely like this color Another thing that I really like about this fabric is this little eyelet design on it. I just have to unfold it to show you really quick. And I really want to incorporate this into some patterns that I'm going to use. I think I have an idea of what I'm going to make. Um, I think I want to make another matching set. so use these as shorts and have the eyelet kind of be on the leg portion. I don't know if you can see this at all, but I thought it would be fun to have just this little eyelet detail at the bottom and then maybe alongside on the sleeves too. And I really want to make just big flowy shorts. I'm just in love with flowy shorts this summer. I don't want anything touching my legs aside from biker shorts because those feel great. Anyways, I also want to make a huge flowy top to match the shorts and I have a pattern in mind but of course I am blanking on it. Um, but maybe I'll show you in the next episode if I end up making it. <sighs> so yeah. Um, that's pretty much all I have today. I wasn't going to record at all because I'm actually leaving this evening to go to the great land of Wisconsin with all of my girlfriends. We're celebrating a 30th birthday, so that'll be very exciting. But I thought I would just slip in another episode this morning because I had the time. Um, so yeah, I also think I might add a little bit of a nature clip at the end because a couple people were asking me what the scenery is like here in Minneapolis so one thing that's cool about knitting podcasts is it's people from all over the world so it's kind of fun to see what their part of the world looks like so I might add that to the end of this um yeah so uh thank you for sticking around and I'll see you next time bye